Hey everyone, CPO here, and in this video, I'm gonna be showing the swap of wheels and tires on my EV6 GT. I'll show you some tips and tricks along the way, including how to tell the proper air pressure you should put in your new tires. Spoiler alert, it's not always the same as the tire pressures recommended by the manufacturer, and I will show you how to tell what new air pressure you should be running. I like to buy wheels and tires from online retailers that you can buy combos because the wheels and tires come to me already ready to go, mounted, balanced, and just ready. Plus, gives me a chance to talk cars with the UPS guy for a while. For this car, I went with Odhan AFF2, and I got them in a 19 by 8.5 size, and this is a plus 35 millimeter offset. There was a little concern about whether or not 19s were gonna clear the bigger brakes on the GT, but as you see, they definitely do. And then for tires, I went with Michelin Pilot Sport 4 SUVs in a 255-50R19. The SUVs have a little stiffer sidewall and are available in the higher profile size that I went with. I also paid to have the wheels ceramic coated before they were sent to me. That way I just don't have to worry about that. I got the hub centric rings. In this case, I needed a 73 millimeter to 67.06 millimeter. And I had to get the spline lugs so they would fit inside the holes on the Odhan wheels. And then I also got TPMS sensors and those were installed as part of the package. So when you buy wheels and tires as a set, they usually come individually packaged like this and uh, usually with some protective cardboard and or foam. This is no exception from Fitment Industries. Now I wanted 19 inch wheels, but I wanted the overall diameter of the wheel to be the same as factory. That's why I went with the size tire I did. Now inside one of the tires is all of the accessories, including a guide on how to test fit, which we will go through. I have the hub centric adapters and then the lugs here. There's also uh, some stickers and stuff like that. They did provide a balancing sheet to show that each tire was balanced. Kind of neat. I haven't got that before. And yeah, I'm just going to unpack all of these tires. And the very first thing I want to do is take a look at them and make sure that A, they are the right size and that B, there's no scratches or marks or, or anything that I need to file a claim against with regard to the wheels. So one of the things I was looking forward to doing was getting a weight comparison between the factory wheel and tire and this new wheel and tire set. So as you can see here, the replacements, the odd Hans with the Michelin PS4 SUVs come in at 54.8 pounds. Here in a minute, I'll get a weight on the factory combo. So jacking up the car is pretty simple. There is a pinch seam that is used as a jack point. I also use this tire dolly to help me get the wheels and tires out. Uh, without having to lift. It also makes it really easy to put them back on because I don't have to lift and align anything. It's just super easy. So now let's get this factory wheel and tire on the scale to get a sense for how heavy these guys are. And look at that, 68.4 pounds. That is a remarkable difference. 68.4 minus 54.8 is 13.6 pounds. I am saving that much on each corner. That's rotational mass. I'm really curious to see how that equates to speed differences, particularly in the zero to 60 and 60 foot times. I'm gonna do some more testing on that in the future. So now I'm ready to put the new wheel and tire combo. I'm putting the adapter ring on and then aligning the holes with the lugs. And again, this little wheel dolly that I got from Harbor Freight makes that super easy. I'm gonna go ahead and hand tighten down the lugs and do the test fit process. One thing I do wanna make sure is that the wheels, including the wheel weights, clear that big brake caliper in the front and also that I'm not hitting any suspension parts. So the first thing I'm gonna do is test and check with the brake caliper. So as you can see here, I'm looking to see if there's any rubbing or anything like that, and in particular, you need to pay attention to wheel weights. I have actually put wheels on a big brake vehicle before, and it cleared until they balanced the wheels and it stripped all the wheel weights off, even low profile wheel weights like this. But luckily in this case, 
the wheel weights do clear by just a millimeter or two, not very much at all. And whenever you have them balanced, you need to make sure that they're using the low profile weights. Now, if it does require more weights or thicker weights, you can have those placed somewhere else other than where they're going to hit the caliper. The next thing I want to do is look at any suspension parts with the wheel at full lock in both directions to see if there's any risk of anything hitting. And I'm not seeing that. The overall diameter is the same as factory, and the offset actually pushes it out a little bit further away. So, in theory, I should never have any problems, but I'm going to go ahead and put the wheel on the ground using a piece of cardboard from the packaging to just double check with the springs compressed and take one more look before I confirm the fact that these are going to fit my car without any issues. And spoiler alert, they fit fine. So I know that there are many of you who are looking at putting 19s on the GT, and there's a lot of questions on which ones will clear those big brake calipers. I can tell you right now, these wheels do. So now that I have confirmed fitment, I'm going to go ahead and do a final torque on these. I always torque my lug nuts, and uh, I'll show you here in a second what my setting is for torque. The one thing I noticed about Kia torque specs is they always give a range, which I think is really a great idea. And in this case, I'm hitting the middle of that range at about 85 foot-pounds of torque. All right, now that I've got the front done, I can go to the rear. Because the front fits, I know the rear is going to fit. Number one, the brake caliper is way smaller. Number two, there is no articulation. In other words, there's no steering component on the back. So really no issues at all. So I'm just going to mount it, torque it down, and then be done with it. All right, side one is done. I'm just going to flip the car around for easy access and then repeat the process on the passenger side of the car. I've already done the fit check, so it's just a matter of mounting the wheels and tires onto the car and making sure that all of the lugs are torqued properly. So there's the first look at the car with the new wheels and tires. I do love that matte bronze look on a gray car. And in particular, this matte gray car, I think it looks really cool. Now the next thing we need to do is determine what the ideal pressure is for the tires. A lot of people assume that when you replace tires on a car, the pressure should be the same regardless of tire size, but that's not actually always the case. So in this case, I'm going to get the tire size and load rating off of the original tire, 355 40R21s at a 102 load rating in this case, and then I'm also going to get the size and load rating off of the new tire, and these are 255 50R19s in a 103 load rating. Next, I want to get the recommended PSI from the vehicle with the factory tires. And so that can be found inside the door jam on the driver's side. In this case, 34 PSI in the front and 39 PSI in the rear. Next, I'm going to go to a website like this, which is tiresize.com. And I'm going to choose the tire pressure calculator. This allows me to understand the pressure requirement differences between the OEM tire and the new tire. So I'm going to plug in all of the tire information for the OEM tire, and that's pretty easy. Next, I'm going to put in the pressure. I'm going to start with the fronts. The front pressure should be 34 PSI. Now I'm going to complete all of the information for the new tire. So same thing, size first, and then it will allow you to choose a load rating. In this case, I know these are 103 because I checked. And then what it tells me is that my new pressure should be 29 PSI for the front tires. I'm going to switch the pressure to 39 for the rears, and it looks like I need 33 PSI in the rears. So then I put a piece of scotch tape over my plaque inside the door jam and write the new pressures on there so I don't have to try and remember what pressures I want. I can put less air pressure in these tires because they are made to handle more weight per tire, which means they'll probably have stiffer sidewalls, and that allows me to have an actually little bit softer of a ride. So instead of 34 and 39 PSI, 
I'm running 29 and 33 PSI, which should be more compliant. So I'm just gonna go through and double check pressures on all of these tires. In this case, I'm basically reducing them all to the new pressure levels. And then once I've done that, we are ready to go. So stay tuned for some testing on whether or not this actually improves performance. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.